It's difficult for us to admit, but we live in a very violent world. The violence seems to surround us and be pervasive around the world. For instance, since before I was born, there are parts of the world that have been at war and those wars don't seem to end. There are countries with conflicts in them because of narco-terrorism or various rebel groups or for other reasons that just don't get resolved. And since the pandemic, we know within countries, particularly like within the United States, violence has increased in the cities. There's an increase in gun violence and other forms of violence. And in the country, there's an increased rate of disappearance for Native American women and for other women. So all these different aspects of violence. And the violence isn't just out there somewhere. It's also in our homes with domestic violence and intimate partner abuse, as well as child abuse. If we look in social media, many people comment about how difficult people are, how easily they fight and argue on social media today. All of that is part of the violence that we live with in society. And it seems to increase and not decrease. So what is it that we're able to do about violence in the world? You know, since I was a child, there have been movements for peace to counteract the violence in the world. During the Cold War era, when people were concerned about the atomic bomb and nuclear research being used in destructive ways, people had slogans like Atoms for Peace to convey that Atomic energy needed to be used for peaceful purposes. Later, the anti-war movement encapsulated the idea that peace had to be given a chance. Give peace a chance. Let peace begin. And then more recently, in the Black Lives Matter movement, the foundation of the Black Lives Matter movement really strikes at the reality that people are being treated with violence in their ordinary lives and that the killing needs to stop. All of these movements have created slogans for us and a certain kind of awareness about the need for peace. But yet the change doesn't happen. We look for our leaders to bring us to peace. But I think the truth is that most of our leaders are invested in the violence. You know, violence is very profitable. It's profitable for the corporations that make guns and that make armaments and that sell our armaments and bullets and everything else that's part of that industry. It's also beneficial to politicians. Politicians who raise fears and cause suspicion and label other groups as enemies as a way to gain political power so that it's helpful for many politicians to be able to, to cause this stir and this tension and to foment violence to be able to have a following and to gain more power. So these are not people who are going to lead us towards peace and lead us towards a better way of life. Even though a peaceful life can be very profitable, but that's not where the energy is going. So if peace isn't going to come because those who lead the world really don't want it, is peace in the world possible? Is it a pipe dream? Is it a liberal conspiracy that we've been taught? No, I, I think it's possible. I don't think it's a conspiracy. I think it can be real. But it's not going to happen from the top down. It begins from the bottom up. And it requires more than slogans and marches. It requires that we as individuals take peace seriously for our lives. And in doing that, we take a stand against violence. By rooting ourselves in peace, we implicitly stand in opposition to the violence. We nurture that peace through our spiritual practice. 
we find peace within ourselves, and that peace grows and becomes more real for us. And as that happens, our relationships with others change. We see others with greater compassion, both our family members and friends, as well as people we have not even met. And as we see people with greater compassion, we realize that we no longer have enemies in this world, but that we're all on the same journey through life. We see that there are parts of ourself in every person we meet, no matter how different that person may be from us. Experiencing that depth of peace in our lives brings us into an awareness of our shared humanity. And finding that, discovering that, is where peace in the world is born. Sure, it's small scale. It's person by person by person. And it begins sort of as creating a bunch of little oases in the world in the midst of the violence. But if we take this seriously, and really teach others and particularly teach future generations, then peace grows and peace will become more predominant than the violence. This idea is not original with me. In the video, Social Justice and the Pain of Others, I talked about various spiritual writers who because of their spiritual practice reached out to change the world. And those changes often were about peacemaking. And I want to remind you of one story in particular of a person whose mission was to teach spiritual practice to bring peace into the world. And that was to a uh, Vietnamese Buddhist monk, Thich Nhat Hanh. Thich Nhat Hanh, growing up in Vietnam, experienced the war and he came to the United States to share the experience of that war with people, as well as to teach mindfulness meditation. So that as people experience peace within themselves, that peace would grow. Thich Nhat Hanh is one of the best read spiritual teachers in the world today. What he has done has been to awaken people to the reality of peace that comes through spiritual practice and meditation and mindfulness, that it's life transforming and brings us to a place where we experience life and others differently. And we can share in that vision, no matter what our spiritual or religious tradition may be, because all the great wisdom traditions of the world carry this nugget with them. They all convey that peace grows in the world because it grows in our lives first. And as we share it with others, it continues to grow. That as we love ourselves, we love our neighbors, and that's transformative. The words are different from one tradition to the next, but the wisdom is the same, and it transforms lives as it transforms the world. My hope is that we, both you and me, will be part of this process to help reduce the violence in the world and to make peace normative, to bring about a change that impacts the way in which people live for the better, that the world will truly be at peace. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, click the bell, share it with others, and leave some comments about your experience of peace and spiritual practice. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate that you spend a few moments here.